When you have a model with multiple explanatory variables, there can be a lot to keep track of. For instance, to evaluate the model, you're going to need to set a value for each of the explanatory variables. This, in turn, involves figuring out what a relevant value is. None of this is hard. For instance, it's often appropriate to use the mean or median of a quantitative variable, or the most common group for a categorical variable. Still, it is tedious. If you want to make a graphic showing the form of the model function, there's even more to do, since you'll want to select several different levels of each explanatory variable to include in the plot. To streamline the task, the statistical modeling package provides two helper functions. Effect size calculates an effect size for you. The main advantage here is that effect size scans your data to find appropriate values for the explanatory variables and an appropriate step size for the explanatory variable whose effect size you are looking for. The function takes two arguments, the model you are examining and a very short formula with just one explanatory variable on the right side of the tilde. This identifies the variable whose effect size you are looking for. Later in the course, you'll see another advantage of effect size. It lets you find a confidence interval. The other helper function is plot model. This graphs model functions. As an example, consider a model of whether a worker is married based on their education, sector of employment, sex, and experience on the job. The conventional format for graphing a model puts the response variable on the y-axis. In this model, that's the probability of being married. The most important explanatory variable to you goes on the x-axis. Of course, what's most important depends on your purpose in constructing and displaying the model. I've selected the age variable. If there are other variables you want to display, you can use color, as I've done here with sex, and you can facet the graph, making small subgraphs. Here I'm showing two different levels of education in the columns and three different employment sectors in the three rows of facets. So in this graph, there are four different explanatory variables. You can judge for yourself whether this is overwhelming. You don't want to make the graphics so busy that it becomes difficult to interpret. The graphs show that older workers are more likely to be married. That's the general upward slope in the curves of probability of being married versus age. You can also see that there are some systematic differences in marriage probabilities for males and females. For professional sector workers, males are more likely to be married than females. The opposite is true for clerical workers. For service workers, the probability is about the same for both sexes. Females with more education are less likely than males to be married in the professional sector. Each of these subgraphs is created by setting the education and sector variables to the level indicated in the margin. Then the model is evaluated for each sex at each of many ages. You can, of course, do this directly with predict. The plot model function does this work for you, collects the result, and graphs them. Let's talk about how to design such graphs. First, the response variable will always be on the y-axis. This honors convention and helps the viewer of the graph to orient him or herself. If the response is categorical, we'll plot the probability of the first level. For the, y -axis, for the x-axis, choose the explanatory variable whose effect you want to highlight. For a quantitative variable on the x-axis, the effect size is the rate of change of the plotted line, in other words, the slope of the line. For categorical variables, the effect size is the difference in model output between two different levels. Additional explanatory variables are used for color and for faceting the graphic, that is, subplots for the different values. To specify which explanatory variable plays which role, you use a formula with the explanatory variables on the right-hand side. The first variable in the formula will go on the x-axis. If there's a second variable included, it will be displayed as color. If there are third or fourth variables, they define the facets.